Well, I'm going to be sharing with you a pixie shag this evening. And I hope that you guys are uh, having a good evening out there. Um, I love these cute little shags because it's just so much fun to create something that's a little bit different. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working with um, a parting. So I've already separated out the bottom from the top. And I'm going to use a technique called block layering. And I've been doing a lot of this recently because um, it removes a lot of hair quickly. Hello from Chile. Hello, hello, you guys. Fun, fun to be here and nice to see you. Um, is this cute for thick hair? Yeah, it can work really well on thick hair. So starting with that block layering. Now block cutting is something where we're going to be taking a lot of hair all at once and cutting it off. What this does is it creates a nice soft feeling when it travels down because distance equals length. So we're elevating up, cutting the hair, and then the hair will drop down and move to length. Hello from Cincinnati. Yes, hello, Cincinnati. So here we go. Someone told me recently I play with my mannequin stand too much. It was funny because I'm like, well, that's how I make it so you guys can actually see without me picking it up. So, okay, here we go. I'm going to lift all this hair up. This is a great technique we did in the 80s a lot to create that kind of a question mark, um, beautiful shape. There's Atlanta. Where else are you guys joining from? I always like to see Massachusetts. Okay, I'm going to come up past 90 or past 45 degrees. So I'm going to come up past 45 degrees and lift up higher so that we get layering, not a buildup of weight. Hello, Toronto. I'm going to be up there in November teaching a class. The IQ, IQ, that's what it used to be called when we had a different program. Now it's Synergy. So here we come. All of that hair all at once. Portland, Oregon, I see you. Already dropped one comb. It's going to be a great haircut. Nova Scotia, yes. Okay, lifting up. I'm just following the head shape. As soon as I cut this back, I'll comb it all down so you can see it. Okay, New Jersey, Virginia. Who else? Fort Worth. I'm going to be in Dallas tomorrow. Um, we're traveling down there, my husband and I, and I hear it's nice and hot. It's pretty hot up here as well. Um, someone asked about an inch away from the head. I'd say this is about two inches. It all depends on how short you want it to be. This is going to become my guide to length for the top. So uh, it might be like an inch and a half to two inches. So this is going to be a little pixie with some like scraggly bits down at the bottom. Okay, so I see Maine, I see Indonesia, nice. Okay, so coming around, making sure I'm in that layering, just elevating up. What this does is it gives us the softness and roundness when it drops down. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so all of that hair pulled straight up. I'm going working from ear to ear. Okay, so where's the ear? There we go. So just working around the head. So I'm standing directly in front of my work. If you um, tend to stand in one spot, you'll over direct. We always over direct to ourselves. So these are my angel blades and um, these are my scissors. I developed these during COVID and um, I just wanted a way to be able to connect with the industry. Um, I, I love them. They're, they're a Japanese molybdenum steel, cryogenically tempered. It's a convex, um, not a convex edge, but a, a <laughs> beveled edge. God, why can't I think today? Beveled edge. And what it does is it allows me to do a lot of different techniques with one scissor. So um, these are my seven inch scissors. So working all the way around. Okay, now you're going to be able to see that softness. I'll turn here so you can see. So here we go. Everything was pulled up about, um, not about 90 degrees from the head form. Now when we go to comb this down, distance always equals length. And so we're going to get a nice soft feeling along the bottom. It's just a really quick way to layer out the hair and to um, make a really soft shape. So this already had a line in it at the bottom. So at the end, I'm going to detail this out so you can see it. But I'll go to the side right here. 
If you guys have any questions about this, please, um, I'll try and catch them as they go by. So lifting up. Now, if I wanted the front to be a little longer, I could just tip my fingers out. So let's see what that gives. This will give a little more softness around that front edge. So let's take a look at that, coming down. And there we have a little bit more of a softer feeling. I'll leave it for now because we might want it later. I always like to um, give myself a little bit of leeway when I'm cutting the hair. Okay, here we go. This should be a good shot of how high I'm lifting it. So pretty much 90 degrees from that part line, tipping my fingers out to create a little bit of length. Out, and then just cutting that hair off. And there we have the softness around the edges. So it's really a fun, um, a fun way to create it. Okay. Now I'm ready to move into the top. So it doesn't take that long to create this really beautiful shag type of feeling. So I think I'm going to do the fringe next and then connect the two areas. I've been playing with that lately. So I'm going to take the parting. Let's do the whole high point of the head. So I'm going to divide this um, front from back right at the high point of the head. To do that, I'll place the central vertical parting and place the comb directly on the head. And where it balances horizontally, that is where the high point of the head is. That's where the hair falls to gravity. So the head needs to be upright. And then we're going to set the comb right there. Now this isn't a normal parting where you would like if you were going to take a long haircut and layer out the back. This would sit a little bit too far forward, but this is great to do um, a shorter cut and layered bangs. So lift the head higher. Okay. A head higher or I'll go here. Thank you. Is that better? I think that's better. Okay. So here we have the high point of the head right there. And then I'll take my parting down to that ear. And I'll cut this front all in the fringe area. I'm going to put that about there. There we go. The head is lifted above the comments. Awesome. There's just so many comments. Okay. So I've got the back. And then we have the front. So, yay. Thank you. Okay, I don't know, you, everyone keep, um, I was taught to cut a shag, oh, exactly how you were taught to, taught to cut a shag in 1982. I believe it, because that's pretty much when I started doing hair, 1983. So, I mean, it works really, really well. So, I'm going to work with the fringe. I want it to be, um, what do I want? I, I don't want it to be too heavy, so I'm going to elevate it up. I'm going to elevate that up. Oh, thank you. I hope I'm out of the comments still. Now I can kind of see my hair. <laughs> I'm going to see my hair itself. There we go. So I'm going to take a central vertical section, and I'm going to elevate this. Let's come 90 degrees off of the head. Let's just do a, let's do a 90 degree layer haircut. It's just so awesome to see 90 degree layers without any texture because it creates such a beautiful shape. So I'm going to use this as my stationary guide for the entire top area. This will give us a little disconnection right here that we can play with later. So I'm taking vertical sections, over directing them to the center, and then working my cut. And I'm following the head shape. Another section. I think you can see that's coming to the center. What other questions you guys have? I have a lot of requests to be in my video. I honestly don't know what that'll do. So it says view request, I'm gonna do it. Let's see. View request. Well, I know Zoe, so I'm gonna... I don't know. Okay, how did you decide how much to take off the top? I was kind of going off of the length that I have right here on the sides. I like that question. Um, so what I've got is I've got the length at the sides, and then I went the length right at the top. Okay, so you're joining me. 
<laughs> I don't know how that happened, but yay. You, you have, <laughs> um, you guys, Zoe is one of my dearest friends. She's here in Spokane, Washington with me. She's the one who cuts my hair. How many of you guys have asked questions about my haircut? This is the woman you want to ask because she's <laughs> the one that does it. I get so many. Oh, now you can't see. Okay, Zoe, I might have to get you out of oh, there. No, yeah, take me okay. out. I don't know how I got there. I don't know how to take you out. <laughs> Can you like shut your feet off? I don't want to. I don't want to take me out. Um, hmm. Just maybe so rejoin. Hop off and rejoin. I'm. I'm fixing it right now, you guys. Okay, here we go. There. There we go. I'm back. Sorry about that. See, I told you I don't know how to do that. Okay, so everything over directed to the center. And somebody asked, how did I decide what length to take this center? It's basically the same length as I was on the sides. So I'm going for more of a rounded layered cut, but with this over direction, I'm going to create more length as it drops down and a narrower effect. So when this comes down over the top, we're going to have this piece in the front to play with. Okay, so I've got that central vertical guide, and now I'm going to take my sections on the other side, over direct, to the center, keep it at 90 degrees, and cut round. Everything to that same point. I love getting in there and playing with um, mannequins because you can, you can try different things. Uh, right now I'm thinking of, how am I gonna blend this to the back? Do I do the same thing in the back? Is it gonna look weird? So we'll find out. We'll just see what happens. So bringing this all to the center. I used to do a lot of, um, you know, kind of crazy things. Okay, so you can see that it's kind of pushing back, and that has to do with it uh, coming forward or coming to the center. So, um, I asked her hairstyles when she was on. Oh, <laughs> there were a lot of people that wanted to know my haircut. It's basically one length with some layers up top and then a lot of texture underneath at the nape area. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so she's got a little disconnect right here and it's longer in the front so this is going to be a pixie in the um in this back area so it's going to be pixie shag so right here i should have about the same length as i have underneath here so right about there and there it's a little longer on top which is fine so i'm going to take pivoting sections around the back and work from the back up I've been saying that my Zoomer clients, when they want this, they hate it. I don't know. <laughs> Zoomer, maybe Boomer? Zoomer, Z and B? Okay, here we go. I've got my central vertical section. I'm just going to round this shape out. So I've got my guide underneath. Now you could, of course, cut this with a razor. You can cut this point cut. Um, however you want. You could chew it off if you really want to. It'd be gross, but you could do it. Okay, there we go. So I have my central vertical guide. So this is going to be very short and through the top, working into all this beautiful softness and length at the bottom. Pivoting sections. Right there, just picking up my guide. And I'm not cutting too far as I'm cutting round. When you're cutting a round shape, you have to take more sections and work off of the head where the hair actually grows. So um, another question on which scissors are these? These are my seven inch angel blades. Um, you can find them at seriousbeauty.com. Um, the link is also in my bio. There's a shop in my, in my Instagram site. So you guys can find them there. They're $4.99. Um, we do a payment plan if you want to do that. And yeah, they're, they're awesome. I, I love them. I've been using them now for a couple of years. I've had them and they're wonderful. They have a great sharpening service um, called Precision Edge and they take care of them for us. So, okay. Now I should mention that this is a um, part of a series 
that is inside of my Sharp Scissors Society. And if you've been on my videos before, um, they, they definitely uh, get a lot of education. So you've probably heard me talk about it. It is my membership program, and it's um, $14.97 a month. And I do two videos a month right now. And right now we're going through a classic series of hair cutting. And um, just going through uh, everything from long hair, bobs, graduation, layering, all of those different uh, techniques. And I'm wondering how I'm going to connect this now. So I'm trying to think and talk. I'm going to start moving into a little bit of a pivoting section so that I can work to that length. Okay, so pivoting right here instead of vertical sections. And I'm just picking up that length. There we go. That should blend okay. And there we have it. I'll just do a nice deep point cut. Change my technique a little bit to keep that softness. I think um, I would call this haircut a pixie shag. I'm going to point at that too. Because it's like a pixie in the back, but a shag around the front. Okay. With some extra bits down here that I'll, I'll need to soften up, but I'm kind of liking the feel of that. Okay. Continuing on. So Sharp Scissors Society, this is one of the cuts inside of Sharp Scissors Society. I've modified it a little bit, but um, you can find that at SeriousBeauty.com also. And the link is in my bio. So many links in the bios. Okay, what questions do you guys have? A mixie, okay, yeah, mix it. Anything with an ixy on it. So I think it was Brianna Cisneros who coined it the bixie. Um, I've had a shabowixie, which is a shag, a bob, and a pixie. Uh, this is now a mixie, somebody just said. I like that. As long as it's a, an ixie. Okay. Did you say your scissors come with a sharpening option? It's not an option necessarily, but we have a sharpening company that um, if you were to need them sharpened in the first year, which the edge is guaranteed for a year, the Japanese molybdenum and steel really holds its edge um, a long time. But if you were to need them sharpened, then um, I believe it's $20 that first, in the inside of that first year. And then after that, it's the regular 40. But they have really quick turnarounds. So you send them in and they're back within, I mean, within a week. Okay, shocked. Why are you shocked? Somebody's shocked. Okay, so coming around. This is where I'm going to start working to that increase in length so I don't cut off all of that softness. So just picking up my guide as I move around the head. And there's that little kick we're going to have in the front. There's my guide getting longer. And shixie, okay. Mixie, shixie, bixie. They're kind of all, all rolling the same way for me right now. Anything that's got a shaggy feeling to it is an ixie. Okay, so I'm pretty good. I think I'm going to run into some different lengths as I get right about here. There we go. Just point cutting, deep, deep point cutting into it to break up the texture. This is awesome for, um, it's awesome for just giving a little bit of looseness in your, in your cut. So here we go. I had the opportunity to work with some new clients today. Some of you know I'm in the salon just a, a small amount of time right now because I spend a lot of time, you know, traveling out and teaching. I like these little pieces. Those little bits are fun. Okay, why would you pull it up directly above and recut on an angle on the side section? I'm assuming we meant right here. So I'll just recap it real quick. So what I did was I went through and I picked up the um, underneath and I did a block cutting. So that block cutting was right around the parietal ridge. So I lifted everything up underneath, up to here, and I cut it off. And that created this softness 
underneath that I'm going to shatter out with my razor when I'm done. Then I went through from the high point of the head and I pulled the hair straight up in the center right here and cut it round following the head shape. The rest of the top, I brought all of that into the center. And what that did was it gave me extra length as it travels out to the sides. So these little pieces down here, when you look at it, is longer. They're, they're longer and they actually came, that came from pulling this hair into that center. Okay. I do the same thing. It's easier to control your life. Yeah, it really is. And then I just am going through and I cross checked this way because I cut around, then I'm cross checking the opposite direction. So let's take our razor to this now and kind of soften it up. How many of you guys use a razor? And do you use a, um, an open blade or a closed blade? I know some um, states it's illegal to use an open blade. I would just absolutely be so sad if I couldn't because it, it makes such a big difference. Um, there we go. Not often enough. Yeah, sometimes we, we tend to just reach for the same tools over and over again because it's comfortable. And, and we are literally making money with our time. So if you're comfortable using one tool, it's sometimes it's hard to um, switch your tool. Okay, so what I want to do down here is I want to break this up. It scares me you don't know how to raise it. Yeah, and you need to get into a good razor cutting class. Um, I offer one. <laughs> I learned um, my technique from Nick Arojo, who's fantastic. So um, anyway, let's come in here. I'm going to use a twist cutting technique with my razor. So I know I want to leave this bit right behind the ear, so I'm not going to razor that. I know I love a feather razor too. I'm actually developing one right now for Angel Blades, so you'll be able to see that soon. And this one is, is from Angel Blades as well. So, okay, so I'm taking a twisting, and what the twisting does is it gives you varying lengths. So I created a hole in essence. I'm creating little, little holes and just softening a little bit more. I feel like that might be a little blunt, so I'm going to elevate. Yeah, there we go. This could also be called an elf pixie. Have you guys heard of that, an elf pixie? Um, this cut, what's the face to recommend? Um, you know, a, a cut like this is really pretty on a narrow face because it does have some roundness. So I would say a narrow face would be a nice um, face shape to cut this on. Also, probably not, only one I wouldn't do it maybe would be someone with a super long face. I might pull the edges up a little bit more. It's all about balance. And when I'm looking at a client, the first thing I do when I look at them, I always look to see, does my eye travel horizontally across their features um, or does it travel vertically up and down? And if it travels horizontally across their features, generally they have either a rounder or a wider um, face, maybe square. They've got a strong cheekbone and jawline. And, you know, in that case, then I would want more of a narrow shape. And somebody's asking about the name of this again. This is a little, uh, let's call it an elf pixie or a shag pixie. Uh, let's, unfortunately, the back. I couldn't understand that last comment. Okay, just breaking up that fringe just a little bit. Hello, Argentina. Okay, I don't want to remove this length, but I do want to um, shatter it out a little bit. So I'm working on the top surface, so just holding it flat and then working across that top. And what this does is it creates a little short to long area that will give us um, a little bit of variation. So I get a little bit of water. Okay. <laughs> okay, keep going here, just a little bit on top. And if I would have cut this all off at the beginning, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to really change it up a little bit and decide what I wanted. So I'm going to come in here and if I want a little separation, I'm going to come on the back side of this. So just carving out so you have a little space in between. Let's see, get a little closer. 
closer this way. So I'm going to watch this C curvature right here and hit my razor right along that edge. So right here. And that way you'll see that separation and creating those pieciness. Um, I've got someone asking how I'm going to style it after. You know, I would diffuse this or I would let it dry natural. So sometimes we, we force a lot into the hair and it doesn't really need it. It can just, you know, sometimes it's just better off leaving it. Okay, and I want to carve in a little bit here, make those a little, a little bit less full. So really, this is, it's just a classic cut, isn't it? It's just a little bit different around the edges. It's got that softness to it. It's got all this texture up on top. And this was all blunt cut. So, you know, you don't have to do a lot of razor cutting if you don't want to. You can create a soft shape, even blunt cutting. Okay, but look at the difference between the two sides. It was cute before, wasn't it? If you wanted to leave a little thicker, heavier, that's a great way to do it. Then you also can take it a little bit softer. So should we leave one side one way and style it out? Like leave a blunt, leave a thick side and, and leave the thin side or do you want me to make them both thin? You guys vote. What do you think? I'm gonna do all the back though. Is anybody? Oh, there we go. Reminds me of Clute, exactly. That is kind of a, yes, yes. Yeah, um, Clute is um, Jane Fonda in um, the 60s or 70s, and she had this shag that looked very, very similar to this. So I think we should do both. I agree with the last person. Okay, so we're going to keep this and style it out and maybe kick it out just a little. And then I'm going to do a little bit more just to break up the back a touch. So it makes just a little bit more sense. So just coming along, I'm just going to reduce a little bit. So I'm just coming in and actually carving out a little bit of that um, thickness in through the bottom. You can see it's starting to um, cup in. Okay, everybody's saying both. I like it. Sometimes that's how we can see the difference between um, the things that we're doing. It's, it's nice to have that variation. A David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie for sure. Okay. Going here, just a little bit out of there. I want to see a little bit more cupping, but I love the heaviness of this side. I think that's going to be really cool. I want to um, maybe give a little more visual balance to these two, so I'm going to take a touch out here and just a touch out here because I have a hole right there. So sometimes when you have a hole, the only thing you can do is work on either side of it. That and maybe just a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Okay. Pretty slick with that razor. Thank you. Okay, I feel like we've got a little too much bulk right here. Are the hair classes pre recorded? Um, so, in Sharp Scissor Society, the, um, the classes, there's two pre-recorded videos a month and I go live twice a month. One I do on Instagram right here, just to entice more people to come. And then the other one is a Zoom live where I do a full haircut combining all the techniques from that month. And that is pre that's recorded and it's only for the members. So just working on the top of that section. If you think about it, short hair will always push long hair. So I'm taking short hair, pushing into long. Carving out the top very gently, not removing a lot of hair, just a little bit, and this will cause it to kick out a little. So you start the razor right where you want it to cup in. So I think that's about enough. I'm going to put a little bit of, um, actually, I'm just going to use a little bit of, this is the playable texture from KMS. And this is um, a texture spray. So what I want to see is I want to see just a little bit of separation, but I don't want a lot of product. In keeping with the 60s, they didn't really use a whole lot of product back then, did they? I don't know which side I like best. You guys are going to have to vote. Okay, so I'm just going to use my diffuser just a little bit. And diffuser is great when you're wanting to uh, just 
kind of air dry the hair. You really don't want to disturb what you would, um, what you're creating. So, you love it with the different sides. Thank you. Um, would this work with a round face shape? Sure. I might elongate it just a little bit more. I might leave some more of the length. Um, so, but I, I think you could do it with a round face shape as long as you let the edges longer and softer. Okay, so just kind of coming in. So he says, my hands are magic. See? Thank you. Okay. I probably won't dry it all the way. We'll just kind of get the, uh, get the feel of it. Just working in a little bit of texture in the top. So not really distorting. Ooh, that's weird. What's happening with the light? Oh, it's this. <laughs> the, uh, the camera's picking up the dark in the blow dryer. Okay. I'm going to keep one side down. So just really using, not really scrunching the hair, but just kind of um, almost a claw coming in and just moving the hair around. Oh, I do. There we go. Just kind of moving the hair around, creating C curvatures. And C curvatures are the thing that make hair interesting. Um, if there's too many straight lines, your eye doesn't travel well, it doesn't move. Okay. Here we go. I have time to read questions if you guys want to ask any. Yes. Where do you guys think hair is going next? And we've, we've had shags and um, soft shapes for a long time. I think we're going to start seeing more bobs again. We already are, actually. And a lot of side parts because there are, um, there are so many side parts from now. Because we've had center parts. So somebody just said, can you do this again? Well, no, but you can watch it. It'll be on my site. So you can go there and watch it. Okay, blunt bob, please. Yes, to create a nice bob is really hard, isn't it? It actually is one of the more difficult cuts because there's only one line to judge. Okay, so now we have our longer side and I kept the edges kind of nice and heavy. I mean, I like that. I think that's fun. Um, if she comes back in six weeks, would I do it exactly the same? Yeah. If she wanted the same cut, it wouldn't be hard to find, really, would it? I did that. Um, I did the underneath, I pulled everything up, and cut it off so that we had that block layering. It moved smoother and, and longer around the edges. On the um, right-hand side, I went in and I took, took out quite a bit of hair with the razor and just made it a softer type of pixie. You could kick these out if you wanted. Okay. And then the longer side, I think is a little bit fresher looking to me. I kind of, I kind of am digging that. It's a little wiggy, a little, you know, just thick. Does it work on any length? Um, you could leave it probably a couple inches longer. If you leave it too long, the top will get kind of mushroomy and heavy. So I wouldn't leave it too long. Okay, you guys, so there we have it. We've got our uh, pixie shag, our elf pixie, whatever you want to call it. It's a shaggy shape and the shaggy shape is always created by leaving length around the edges. Um, a round layer haircut on top and round layered bangs. And that's kind of what, sh what you get. Uh, when you detail with the razor, would it be better wet or dry? It was still damp. You, could, you can do both, but um, I wouldn't do too much with, with the dry. Just it's a little bit easier on wet hair. So guys, thank you so much for um, joining me. You love my haircut. What is it? I have a a bob. I've got a bob with a little bit of layers and a lot of texture underneath. So it's pretty simple. A kixie. I like that. What is my haircut called? A bob. <laughs> okay, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, go ahead and head over to my site or you know, click over to my site. You can check out my scissors, Angel Blade Scissors there, and also Sharp Scissors Society. So it was great uh, seeing you. This will be up on my um, site and I look forward to seeing you again.